A while ago, I was looking at a map that looked something like this. It's called a Mercator Projection, and as my eyes were scanning through the map, I stumbled upon this plot of land, so big it was similar to the size of Africa, or South America, and even bigger than Australia, a continent in itself. Yet this plot of land that I'm talking about is part of North America, and is an island called Greenland. So when I saw Greenland on the map, it made me wonder, why isn't Greenland a continent of its own? I mean, it's huge, bigger than Australia, and is even separated from mainland North America, just like Australia. Well, before we start arguing on whether Greenland should be a continent or not, we have to look at a few things before we decide. My name is Eliel, and in this video, I'm going to explain what exactly defines a continent, and how the Mercator projection, which is like one of the most popular ways of projecting the world map, is actually distorting the way we see the world. First, let's define the term continent. In simple terms, a continent is a large plot of land, usually separated from other continents by lots of water, like oceans. They also usually have their own tectonic plate, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically like slabs of rock beneath the Earth's surface that move around and cause all kinds of things like volcanoes or earthquakes. So we have continents like North and South America, Africa and Australia. There's also Antarctica, which is a continent in its own. It's pretty easy to see why these five are all their own separate continents. But then we have Europe and Asia as two different continents, despite there not really being much of a physical barrier between them, other than some mountains that stretch across the boundary of these two. But that's irrelevant to the topic of the video. So now that we have loosely defined a continent, let's move on to the next topic of discussion, the Mercator Projection. The Mercator Projection is a map projection that shows the Earth as a rectangle. But of course, since the Earth is a sphere, it's difficult to show the Earth as a 2D rectangle. Why does this matter? Well, because of this, the map distorts the size of countries near the North and South Pole, making them larger and makes countries closer to the equator look smaller. So obviously, this is pretty significant, since this is literally changing the way we see the world. I mean, look at the size of Russia. It's massive. Or Canada, which is also huge. But then look at Africa, which is really, really small compared to its actual size. And going back to talking about Greenland, because of its proximity to the North Pole, Greenland looks really big, almost the size of Africa. Okay, so back to why Greenland isn't a continent. Now we know that the size of Greenland is actually smaller than what we see on the Mercator projection because of how close it is to the North Pole. But if that's not the actual size of Greenland, how big is Greenland in actuality? Well, I found this really cool website that lets you drag around countries to different areas on the Mercator projection and show how big that country actually is. We're going to use Alaska as an example. Because Alaska itself is pretty close to the North Pole, Alaska looks pretty big. And that's not to say that it isn't. It's still the biggest state in the US, and it's bigger than practically any other nation in Europe, other than Russia, of course. But Alaska, at least on the Mercator projection, looks like it's the size of Australia. Well, let's drag Alaska over to Australia and see if this is the case. Well, we can see how as it got closer to the equator, Alaska actually shrunk, like a lot. But now that we have Alaska over Australia, we can see that Alaska is not actually as big as it's made out to be on this map. So if this is the case with Alaska, then we can only imagine how small Greenland actually is. Well, let's spawn in Greenland. Now, since it looks like it's the same size of Africa, we'll drag it over on top of Africa and see how big it truly is. Well, okay, we've barely moved Greenland, and it's already drastically shrinking in size. Okay, well, there is Greenland compared to Africa. I mean, don't get me wrong. Greenland is still pretty big, but nowhere near the size we saw on the map. Just out of curiosity, what does Russia look like compared to Africa? Yeah, so Russia is still huge, but definitely not bigger than Africa. Okay, back to Greenland. Maybe we can still argue that Greenland could be a continent if it's bigger than Australia. You know, an actual continent. Well, no. Australia is around three and a half times larger than Greenland. Therefore, there is no real argument for making Greenland its own continent. But wait, let's go back to the map that showed all the tectonic plate stuff. Yeah, that one. So like we said, all the other continents have their own tectonic plate, and therefore it makes sense for them to be their own continents. Except for Asia and Europe that actually share a tectonic plate, they are divided into two continents. There isn't much separating them other than mountains like we said earlier. So why are they separate? Well, you're going to want to make sure you subscribe to the channel to watch the next video where we'll be discussing why Asia and Europe are considered separate continents. So on that note, I'll see you guys there.